Bible Fridays. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> and once again, RJ's not quite ready. <laughs> Suzanne stuck her head in my studio about five minutes ago. She goes, you do know it's almost three o'clock. And I went, no, <laughs> that can't be. But it is, and here I am. So I need to drink from my vintage. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I was making chocolate chip cookies earlier. I have a, a, my own uh, little changes I do up on my chocolate chip cookies that I make. And I uh, was going to have a couple here I could eat. And Oh, no, they're on the other side of the studio. I just have to bring coffee. <laughs> so anyway, let me tell you what's going on. Oh, boy. It's, uh, um, I finished this painting. <laughs> Actually, this is almost the pose that I was in last Friday when uh, I was working on this and <laughs> A rainbow effect came across the painting and highlighted really at this spot. And uh, thanks to uh, Sarah Thornton, who sent me a, I took the clip right out of the video and sent a picture of me going like this. Well, anyway, the the uh, people, uh, uh, Sean Legrant uh, and his family, his paintings. For, in fact, their name is on the uh, on the life preserver right here on the boat. He liked it so much, and I liked it so much that it is now permanently on the painting. I painted it in there, <laughs> so I'm gonna. There you can see the, you can see the boat, and that that actually is from a photo of the the boat of uh, the family on the boat uh, going to the campgrounds, and right here on this side of the painting you can see the monorail up here over here and there's your your foreground I hope this is showing up okay for you I'm trying not to make you too seasick and um, and actually uh, having to redo this because if, if you weren't aware if you're new to this whole thing with me uh, I did this painting uh, months ago and um, it's uh, we sent it UPS now I go UPS all the time and they're great um, and uh, in fact, we have very good friends, Holly and Rick Hines. And Rick Hines is uh, one of the managers, and he handles all the planes going out of the Louis building for UPS. So I have to be nice. I have to go to UPS because of them. I mean, geez. But no, they're great. Unfortunately, somewhere between <laughs> Chicagoland and their place, it got damaged. And it was actually crushed on this side, I think it was. And actually broke the stretcher frame and ripped the painting and stuff. And we debated whether or not just restretch it on a smaller frame, which would have, it just wouldn't have been good. And so uh, fortunately I had insured it. And, um, it. and normally they said, oh, it'll take a week to 10 days and you'll get, you'll get your money. It took six weeks. But anyway, I did get it. And um, so <laughs> get this just right here um i had to pull the shades down i'm we're going to be installing because i'm building shelves in my studio i'm going to be installing some uh, uh shutters i'm not shutter shades that are the, like two inch wide slats that look like real wood and i'll be able to control the light in here better but right now i just have vinyl shades but here it is it's done with the rainbow uh, effect uh, and light shooting up let me see that closer there it is <laughs> uh, it was magic. It just suddenly appeared. Um, now, I am also working on three other paintings. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hey, there we are. Um, and I'm going to show you one here in just a second that I've been laying out. But first, you're probably wondering, why am I wearing a coat? Yeah, now, okay, this coat. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there it is. Lake Placid, 1980 Olympics. Uh, for those of you who are too young 
and don't don't know are most of us that are old enough and I'm, and I'm only in my 20s but still I remember uh, the 1980 Olympics and when the US Olympic hockey team which were all college students they weren't pros beat the Russians it was called the miracle on ice and then they went on to the uh, gold medal round against Finland and won the gold medal um, phenomenal phenomenal they made a movie of it called miracle on ice and um, um, anyway I got this jacket and of course we became very good friends with Mike Ruzioni who was captain of the team also scored the winning goal against the Russians in that game oh, excuse me when I get this jacket off don't go away oh, 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 oh. okay I love that I love that coat it's it's I only wear it during the uh, Winter Olympics every year. Look at the sleeves. And, uh, and it's on the, isn't that cool? Anyway. So, yeah, I only wear it during the Winter Olympics, so make it last. And so, uh, how did I meet er, uh, Mike Ruzioni? Well, I'm going to tell you. And then I'm going to show you something else here in a second. But, uh, now, I want to go ahead and show you the painting. I need more coffee. This is, <laughs> everybody says, how do you talk for an hour? I says, I'm all over the place. I don't know what I'm going to talk. Some I write some things down to talk about, and then I get going. And then today, it was like I was trying to work on the layouts for these paintings. Oh, let's go ahead and finish the story on Mike Ruzioni. This is a photo. And get it to the light. There he is. There's Mike. And of course, he signed this to us. Um, and uh, Mike, uh, for years, ever since then, has been doing motivational speeches and guest speaking. He plays celebrity golf tournaments, uh, even played on a celebrity hockey team and stuff. And uh, we've uh, known him. He, we knew him before he was married. Then he married Donna, and their kids are now in college or out of college. I mean, a lot of years to go. But um, anyway, I was, um, and those of you who are just joining, you are seeing the, the uh, rainbow effect from last week that shined on the painting, so I painted it into the painting. That is not a reflection um, or projected him at light. Where was I? Oh, anyway, <laughs> Mike Arruzioni. Yes, um, I had uh, 1980, uh, and it was not uh, long after the Olympics that uh, I left Disney. And I was, one of the things I started working on, of course, I was doing paintings, I was doing murals. But one of the things I got involved with was doing special events a lot and directing uh, parades. And uh, Suzanne and I were hired to uh, direct uh, and produce the uh, Citrus Bowl Parade. It was the Tangerine Bowl Parade and halftime show at the, for 1980. We did it 1980-1981. And um, it was crazy. It was fun. It was wild. We also uh, built uh, 10 huge floats that were like 70, 80 feet long, uh, totally enclosed. They don't do that anymore for the, the Tangerine Bowl, Citrus Bowl Parade. It's They have a parade, but it's kind of strange. Um, anyway, and but I knew to do the parade and really have a good time with the parade and get, because we were going to be on national TV, we needed to have um, Disney in the parade. And how was I going to get Disney in there? Well, I still knew everybody at Disney, so I had recently left and I was in management. And I uh, decided that... I needed to have a really good grand marshal. So this was only a couple months after the Olympics in 1980. And I found out, uh, I wanted to find out who his manager was. We didn't have internet then uh, and stuff. So I had to do it the old fashioned way, start making phone calls. Well, I finally found at that point, um, uh, Mike has an agent now and everything, but back then his agent was uh, his attorney and a good friend of his. And so I, called him up and told him that we would like Mike to be our grand marshal in the parade. 
in Orlando, which was on thanks, Thanksgiving. No, not, it was on the 18th of December. Yeah, it was a week, about a week before Thanksgiving. And um, so the attorney says, well, I don't know, cause, you know, because we couldn't pay him. But we were going to give him a suite uh, and a, a beautiful suite in a hotel. Uh, we were going to take him out to Disney because Suzanne and I could still take people in and everything for free and all that stuff. And we were going to work some stuff out with Disney. And, um so he says, the attorney says, well, I'll see, I'll tell him about it. We'll see if he wants to do it. Well, the next night, Suzanne and I are sitting there watching TV, one of our favorite shows on TV, whatever it was. And the phone rings and I pick it up and I go, hello. And, and I, this guy says, hey, is this Randy? Of course, he didn't know me as RJ. That was still Randy. I said, yeah, who's this? He goes, this is Mike Ruzioni. I went, oh. Susie is going like, who is it? And I went, it's Mike. Hi, Mike, how are you? Uh, I'm so glad you could call. I was like, my heart was beating a mile a minute. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> well, Mike was very nice as a turn. He's a great guy, uh, great family and stuff. And he said, he said, I'd love to do it. He sounds like fun. He was gonna have him down for, for like five or six days, something like that. And uh, he said, I only ask one thing. I says, what's that? He says, could I bring my cousin? Because we grew up together. The Ruzioni family and other members of their family are all, I guess a lot of them live on the same street, um, Italians. And uh, so I said, sure, bring him. And Tony is a football coach, I believe, and uh, has been coaching for years. Anyway, they came down. The minute we announced it in the Orlando Sentinel newspaper, I called Disney, they saw it, they said, we will be in the parade. And uh, uh, then before you knew it, all the other theme parks that were there at the time, they wanted to be in it. Uh, so I started getting all these really neat floats from different places and it turned into a really neat thing. And uh, then the next year, Mike uh, came back and was our on-camera uh, uh, host on the show with uh, uh, the, Disney ambassador, and they did the show uh, live, which was really neat. So we had him back again, and just one thing after another. Then he started doing these things every once a year for Disney and all these other things. So we were constantly seeing him, and it's been a, a fun relationship over the years. So yeah, Mike Ruzioni, um, and so here we are at the Olympics again. And I believe, if I heard this right, that this year it is not pros that are going to play for the hockey USA team, which is not, never should have been because that's supposed to be amateurs. I, I hate that they put pros in there and they're going to be college students again. So I'm hoping that I heard that right. And that's what it's going to be because it's much more exciting, especially great for the, the college uh, kids that are playing hockey and want to get into the pros. That being said, um, Let's see. Are, are anybody, okay, I am gonna. I am gonna draw here. Um, is oh, Larry? Oh, that rainbow is Walt looking down. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it was so funny last week, and I was uh, doing a little bit on this painting. And uh, uh, hi, Joyce from Delaware. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I. Uh, was looking at the screen here and not realizing it's what somebody I said on this. I said, well, let me see what's on the live feed. And somebody says, I love the rainbow. I says, what rainbow? <laughs> so now it's permanent. It's there. Um, and uh, Stevian, am I saying that right? Stevian? That's a neat name. Uh, hi. Um, okay, so Anyway, I've told you about Mike Ruzioni. Everybody watch the Olympics because I I love the Winter Olympics and uh, was never really big into hockey until we watched the 1980 hockey team uh, go through that and win the gold, which they weren't supposed to win anything that year. And uh, so that was pretty cool. Now, this this painting, I've shown you that. And so I'm going to get it carefully off of here. Because, and right now, it's... Yeah, I think it stopped snowing, but it's supposed to snow some more. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, we had four or five inches on the ground, and we've gotten another uh, like ten inches on top of it. 
Um, and I love snow. I really do. I, I'm just getting tired of shoveling. So, <laughs> but anyway, and uh, I refuse to, everybody's still there? Hi. Uh, I refuse to uh, drive in the snow. Actually, we can't because we, we bought a uh, soon-to-be classic 2000 Mustang uh, that only had 65,000 miles on it. Uh, we bought it about uh, two years ago now. And uh, it's rear wheel drive and it's five speed. We love the car. And we, we bought a new 65 Mustang when we got married for $2,500. What? <laughs> yeah, that's all they were. <laughs> I, cut my, I, cut my, I cut my own hair. So he says, what are you doing? He says, I can't stand it anymore. And I can't go out because it's snowing. So. so if it looks funny, it's my fault. Um, okay, now you're you're going. What is that? All right, stop looking at that because you're going to look at this first. Uh, Sarah, I haven't seen if you're on there uh, yet, uh, but uh, let me. I'm not going to try to find your name, but uh, uh, I know Sarah uh, watches these, and this is the Jungle Cruise. Let's go this way. There we go. And this painting is 30 by 36. And there are going to be uh, the gators right here. Um, and actually, that's the one when you look at our the cover of our first book, Together in a Dream. And I'm painting a gator. Or actually, it's a crocodile. I'm saying gator. It's because it's Florida. Uh, but anyway, that's the croc I'm painting in the picture. Another little neat thing about that, that photograph was taken of me painting that crocodile and about 20 minutes later, while I was still finishing up, touching up the crocodile, it was the whole ride, the attraction was down for rehab at the time. And, and it was so cold for uh, a number of days that any water that was still sitting in the bottom of, of the waterway froze and it just stayed that way for days. And we had one patch right near the loading dock that was about 20 feet long. So we were here, we were sliding across the bottom of the jungle cruise. How many people can say that? <laughs> so <laughs> we could have killed ourselves, but it was fun. Um, but anyway, right after I finished uh, or was finishing up painting the crocodile, this little white stuff starts landing on me. And I go, What is this? Now it's Florida, right? It does snow on occasion. In, Central Florida, and it was snowing. Middle of the day, it was actually about three in the afternoon. Yeah, not long before, not long after that, I headed home. Got home, and I said to Susie, "I said, Chuck, I believe what happened to me in the jungle. It was snowing. Well, so funny. So anyway, this this painting uh, is going to be neat, and I'm putting in. Um, I'm taking these out of their normal position, but I'm doing one of the elephants from the elephant pool here, because obviously these crocodiles and the elephant are not in the same area as you go through the jungle cruise. But um, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm doing this whole painting in, in sepia tones. So it's going to be um, uh, reddish browns and, and other lighter shades and stuff, and darker. It's going to be really cool really going to have fun with this. This is actually the one I'm going to be painting uh, this week, uh, getting it finished, and then I'll jump on to the other painting. I'll show you in a second. Um, I was going to sketch a little bit on the uh, crocodiles, and you see there's there are people on the boat. Uh, I didn't bother to do detail in, in pencil on these people here, but uh, the two adults here and the two kids are from photographs that were sent me, and that's their family on the Jungle Cruise. What fun in sepia. Um, and it's uh, going to be kind of stylized. I'm going to actually not paint all of this. That's, that's my plan right now. I'm not sure. I'm kind of playing with that. So get that one out of the way. And carefully put it over. There. Then there's this. 
this, this is the one I've been telling you all about. This is the squad room. Um, I think I can slide this back and forth and see, see it easier. Let me, let me get to this side of the painting. There we go. Okay. Now, this is for uh, a person we've become really good friends, a retired police chief. And uh, over the years, his whole career was in the same police department in the Chicago area. I'm not going to tell you specifically where it was, but anyway, it wasn't Chicago, but it was in the area. He started out as a dispatcher. So when he contacted me, he says, I want to have different characters, Disney characters, uh, portray me in the different positions I had. So these are all his favorite characters. And it's if you sort of see the layout of the room, this is a big window looking to the outside. Um, and I'll show you over on the other side here in a minute because there is the jail cell. But in the background here is a desk. It's kind of roughed in at the moment. And here's Stitch uh, with all the phones. He's got cords going all over the place. And not a, a picture or a bulletin board sideways. He's got notes pinned on it. And he's answering all the phones. He's the dispatcher going wacko. Uh, the uh, um, genie, and I forgot which. Now there's a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be careful. I'm going to get different ones wrong because he, he was a uh, dispatcher, uh, a patrolman. I think the patrolman is going to be Pinocchio over here. That's the patrolman. Um, and then either this or um, this or him. <laughs> Duh. Uh, oh boy anyway it might be him one of them is a sergeant all right and then <laughs> that's, that's funny uh it's you know i'm going uh i lose my mind i'm actually just totally gone um but woody here is um i think he's a sergeant Anyway, Mickey is the is the uh, chief, which is his last position he held. Now, every one of these characters is going to be in the uniform that he wore, uh, with his uh, his badges on and his pins on the collars, whatever is going on. Um, so, and they'll have the the proper colors. So they'll all have on a, uh, a dark blue slacks for the most part i think all of them do and uh the shirts now the chief has a white will have a white shirt on and i think goofy over here has white shirt the rest of them will have on a french blue um shirt and i have to make sure i get everything correct this is this is a lot of there's a lot going on in this over here on the side you can sort of see the images of three automobiles the middle one is the sheriff's car from toy story the one right here next to him is mcqueen but he's going to be actually done as a police car and then on this side is herbie as a police car so there's a lot of funny things going on in this now i'm going to slide this across and if you're wondering what's going on, because this looks so, so uh, crazy here. And this actually was what I was working on when my wife walked in and said, yeah, no, it's almost three o'clock. And I went, ah, um, <laughs> is I had laid it out from the sketch. I have a sketch. But, uh, here's the sketch. There you go. Uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And, uh, but Mickey was on this side and Woody was in the center. And uh, he had asked me to, to switch the two. Well, I laid it out and I forgot about that. And then this morning I'm going, oh gosh, they're in the wrong position. So not only did I have to use my pink pearl eraser and erase as much as I could on the characters, uh, then I put Woody over here and I have him pointing now over what's going on beside behind Mickey who's totally oblivious, actually, as the chief, because he's looking at his notepad and stuff. 
And I, I reversed the way Mickey was looking because when he was on this side, he was looking the other way. The squad room is going to be done in dark tones, um, almost 1930s look to it. And we decided the idea would be to make it sort of look like uh, um, Roger Rabbit type of squad room. So I've taken some things from that idea, the desks and stuff. But, um, you know, like I have a chair here that's the old chairs with the, that's all wood and it's on, on rollers. Uh, now, as this goes across, you get over on this side and we have Goofy. Goofy is wearing a Sherlock Holmes hat. He is, this is when he was a detective. So he has on a trench coat. He will have on a tie. And of course, here you see uh, you the same, another character, character, another position he held as a patrolman. Uh, he's uh, Pinocchio. And he's helping, they're getting the crazy, what is it, the crazy Mickey or the, anyway, the real crazy Mickey. They're trying to get him in to the cell. And, of course, in the cell is Jessica Rabbit. Now, this isn't finished. I mean, these are all rough. So these are the bars of the cell. And I'll have to show the door open and the side of which probably open this way. So, anyway, that's what's going on. Now, um, so I'm going to actually um, do a little sketching on this, something a little different instead of painting because I was, uh, love this sketch. Well, thank you. It's Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Um, <laughs> I posted a, posted a picture earlier. I actually took video of the snow coming down and, uh, and there's Sarah. Sarah, did you, okay, <laughs> did you see your, your drawing? Hey, it's the jungle. Oh, you did, okay. What are you gonna name the boat? What do you want? What do you want me to name the boat in the Jungle Cruise? Um, gosh, I'd have to look up the different names. Or unless you just wanna come up with one, that'd be fun. Um, and, and Bobby, you were, at WDW at Christmas, and it was snowing around 89, around 1989, 90. Uh, yeah, we were still there. Uh, Suzanne was still working. She worked there until 94. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, I, I love what Melancholia. Am I saying that right? Um, People have so many beautiful names. Uh, and uh, okay. I think this is the best one yet. <laughs> what? Yeah, Sarah, I've done two other paintings for Sarah. One was the uh, uh, Anton and Remy having a wine and cheese party. And the other was uh, the one in the park on uh, Main Street, uh, fireworks at night with your kids in it. And, okay, uh, Sarah Thornton, we are unsure unsure of a name for the boat. Okay, <laughs> we've got time. <laughs> you have to come up with it in the next week. <laughs> and somebody was just, we just had uh, some people over um, last evening, and uh, they got to see the painting uh, that I showed you a little bit ago of the uh, Bay Lake. And... Uh, she asked how long it take me to, to do the painting. And an actual work time, because I work anywhere from, oh, maybe four or five hours painting, sometimes a little longer. Um, I get very, very involved in it too, I really do, so that I, I lose track of time. And uh, actually I'm in an alternate universe <laughs> constantly. But anyway, um, it takes about, for that one, it took, I'd say, a week and a half. So maybe about seven, eight, nine days of 
if I were to paint eight hours a day. Actually, it took a couple of weeks to get it done in the time frame that I was doing it. Because I do take, I try to take weekends off. Not always successful. Um, oh, Sarah, yeah, you need to come up with something clever. Yes. Um, like Sue Foot Jane or something. I don't know. <laughs> I better, I'm too wacky today. I better not try to come up with anything right now. Mm. And if you haven't seen the mug I'm drinking from, it's, there it is. I usually drink from this one when I'm having a great day. Uh, I'm very happy. Now, what I do when I work on, on these, uh, putting this together, this, actually, this was one of the most complicated. Um, I actually sat down to do this sketch. At first, I'm going like, how am I going to put all of these characters into this painting and make it work because I, I definitely wanted to create the humor of a slide it across there for those of you who may have just joined. Um, and yeah, there's Woody, Buzz, there's Buzz. <laughs> I forgot his name before. <laughs> and, and, uh, and if you've just joined and don't know, I'm RJ Ogren, the artist. <laughs> and I was an audio animatronic artist for Disney. And we've got books out, buy our books. Oh, wait, here. Uh, um, and by the way, oh, I just I just joined Harry's Shave Club, you know, the, the you hear about the razors. And I, I got my test one to try it, see if I liked it. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. And they're, I love this because I'm half Swedish and it's Swedish steel. So I don't care, it's good. So, uh, and I'm not telling you to buy it. Because I don't do it. Ads. I do ads for our books and for paintings. If you're interested in a painting, just message me. I'm not here. Uh, who is called Chicago, Illinois? Don't know who that is. Um, call from Chicago, <laughs> It's probably a robocall. We get about two of those a day. Call from but Chicago, IL. Anyway, um, because I, I told everybody earlier that I. My hair was driving me crazy, and because of all the snow, I couldn't get out to get a haircut, and uh, so I cut my own hair. <laughs> so he says, actually, it's not bad, except across the back, it's all uneven, so I'm, I'm not going to turn around completely so you can see the back of my head. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but um, uh, after I showered and everything and all that, and I, I dried my hair, and I was Call me, and I, I'll suddenly see this one little, well, not one, but five or six longer hairs sticking out. So I got the little scissors, and I went to cut it, and I actually nipped my ear. I cut my ear. Ah, here come the jokes. The artist in the ear. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm dangerous with stuff. I was trying not to cut myself because I, I stretch this canvas. I do buy pre-stretch canvases uh, when I can. But this this one, this one's thirty by forty. Uh, Sarah, yours is thirty by thirty six, and that one I had to stretch because I couldn't buy buy one that was already stretched in that size. And uh, I was attempting not to cut the tip of my finger off again, which I've done in the past. Also, if you uh, uh, want to buy a really neat gift for Valentine's. Buy our books. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> you can go on Amazon or Theme Park Press and see the books that Suzanne and I wrote about Disney. And uh, and yes, we are working on a book, but it's taking longer to do this one. And I am so busy with paintings now that, uh, um, which is great, but it it makes it more difficult. So how we're writing this next book actually is that Suzanne is doing a lot of the research. Um, and going back to her diaries and stuff and getting more research from Disney, uh, through Disney archives so that we can put it all together. And then I will actually, whatever chapter, each chapter, I'll sit down in the evening or on weekends when I'm not painting. And I will, which is how I like to write. I write long in. Actually, I print real fast. 
Don't ask. I can write. Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's a long story. Anyway, I like to I like to just write. It's almost a stream of thought as I'm telling the story, and then I go back in and and I'll I'll edit it. And, you know, so I give it to Suzanne then. Uh, with the other books that we wrote, the other two we wrote together, we wrote alternating chapters. But this one here, it's we're going to be writing every chapter together. But we still want to do uh, be able to uh, infuse both of our uh, uh, us into the book uh, the way we did with the other books. So, and my wacky humor uh, and things that have happened. So I'll write these things of say, okay, we're writing about a specific event that was going on that we were there for and maybe the opening of Epcot or whatever and something funny that happened. I'll write about that and we'll insert that. And, and she's great at it because she also is great at editing. Our publisher, Theme Park Press, loves her because she does so great at putting it all together that every book that, that we've put out, her novel, our two books together, my book, they didn't have to do hardly any editing. They came back with, I think, about 20 little things through the whole book. You know, they left out a period here or something, which is incredible. Um, and uh, she's not only a, a great white, white writer, she's a great white. <laughs> Learn how to talk, aren't you? She handed me this. This is actually her blog, which she writes uh, every Friday afternoon. And I talk about it. So if you go to srogren.blogspot.com, so it's S R O G R E N, um, and uh, you can read her. And this one here, uh, which is neat, it's called "A Fun Way We Achieve Creativity and Productivity as Well." She read it to me, and it's it's really really good. I think you'll really enjoy reading this. They're not long. They're just you know. There you go. One page. And um, so please go to her blog. Now, back to the, well, let me see if anybody said anything here. Um, do anybody ask anything? You're in funnier than usual today. <laughs> all right, one of my favorite comedians of all time was Red Skelton. One of the reasons he was so funny and said he'd laugh at his own jokes, and I have a tendency to do the same. I'll say something and nobody else laughs, but I'm laughing because I, th I think it's funny. <laughs> and Suzanne, oh, by the way, we're getting ready to do uh, our next uh, Shakespeare play uh, through Bard and the Burbs, which uh, our son started. And uh, he is not, he directed Hamlet and, and starred in Hamlet, but uh, Suzanne co directed with him. Suzanne is directing. Much Ado About Nothing, and they're having auditions on Sunday after we have a production meeting. I'm doing the set, and uh, Suzanne is not going to let me be in the play. It's all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. Actually, I asked her, I told her, I said, I don't want to be in the next show. <laughs> I'm too busy. Oh, God. I should get paid for this, even if nobody does like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Told you, I'm laughing at myself that I got to. You know, it's just, and so a lot of you responded, by the way, when I wrote a thing yesterday because I had posted something that was political. I tend to try to stay away from that because I know we don't all agree. Everybody has a right to their opinion, and I, I love to discuss things with people. But I did put sort of a disclaimer on the thing I posted. You know, I says, this is why I did this. Um, I'm not going to say what it is because I want to start a discussion here. But and, and everybody was great. There was, you know, people were looking at it, and, and some hit like, others, you know, it's fine. Um, but what happened was that uh, an acquaintance uh, friend, not a good friend, not a close friend, um, that we've known for years, uh, came on and just lambasted me and actually uh, said I must be drinking something weird in the Kool-Aid and uh, 
there must be something wrong with me. And I went, what? You can disagree with me, but don't. No, don't do that. That's not what this is all about. We're all Americans. We all have our opinions, and that is our right, and being a veteran, and I will fight to the death for anybody to have that right to say what they believe, even if I totally disagree with it. I'm disagreeing with myself right now, so there. Susie isn't going to let me be in the play. <laughs> all right, that's enough. I get off my grandstand. <laughs> I won't put anything else on political. <laughs> okay. When I do something like this with all these characters, of course, I have to uh, get pictures of the characters to go by uh, and put them together and then I'll alter the way they're standing or what they're doing and you know, the arm movement. But it's just coming up with the whole process. What's kind of funny is when I'm doing the cars that are over here in the outside, which if you've just joined, uh, there's three police cars. The middle one is the sheriff's car from Cars. This one is uh, McQueen, but it has a police car. And this is Herbie, the love bug, as a police car. So um, I thought, oh, I got to get pictures of Herbie. Now, you know, I can go on, I can go on the internet and find some stuff sometimes, but usually I, I just collect, I've collected stuff over the years. This is what I'm using to create the drawing of Herbie. And this was our, um, this is our daughters. Look at there. See, Dawn. She put her name in it when she was quite young. And wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> this golden book belongs to, and Suzanne wrote in here, given to Sean Ogre in September 1977. So he would have been three. Well, evidently, uh, Don liked the book even more, and she crossed his name out <laughs> and wrote her name. She was, uh, let's see, she would have been seven at the time. <laughs> I'll have to show him this. I'll get a kick out of it. Our daughter and son have always been great friends they, um, growing up. and So that's very funny. So, yeah, I, I use stuff like that. Um, I, uh, I said I was doing the squadron, sort of like Roger Rabbit. And I actually found this, this picture of, of uh, Jessica that I'm going to use. And I'm... Did, I took this, I actually took a photo of the movie because I have the movie, so I took my camera and I could stop motion. Anyway, and just so I can get an idea of the background and colors and stuff and put that into this sort of a 1930s uh, look for this. But you know that I've been on for 45 minutes and haven't drawn a single line. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? What's everybody saying today? Um, <laughs> I think I'll get a book for my daughter for Valentine's Day. That's a great idea, Sarah. Everybody, get a book for your daughters, your sons, your significant others, your enemies. No, no. no. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, and, and uh, uh, Tina, I, I am doing the sketch for you this weekend. Um, Tina Bass, I don't know if you're on here, and, oh, hi, Mark, Mark Travis. Mark, we go all the way back to high school. We graduated mm -hmm. high school together. Nice to have you on. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, Tina and, and her, is he your boyfriend or husband? It's a boyfriend. But anyway, he is a nut for uh, Bob Ross. And uh, after me talking about Bob Ross, uh, my previous videos, uh, being friends with him and the stuff I did, and doing the cartoon. And by the way, if you go, I actually, uh, thanks to Tina, we found, she found the videos of the cartoon I did of Bob Ross that introed his shows for a few years. And, uh, um, but anyway, I'm doing a drawing for them. Of Bob Ross, the cartoon character. Um, we're we're going to send it. Uh, they live in England. <laughs> so I, said, I better check on prices. Jeez, 
I mean, this was only going to be uh, like eight by 10 drawing and it was going to cost in the envelope and everything. It was going to cost $75 approximately. No. Fortunately, they have a good friend that lives in Tampa. I'm going to send it to her because she's going over there in late summer to see them. So she's going to hand deliver it. And now RJ is actually going to draw something. Don't go away. I'm going to slide this over so you can see. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I laid her out real quick. So I'm using it. If you're wondering what I'm using, it's a pink pearl eraser. And when I um, lay out my paintings, I do it in lead pencils. Um, and then I, I block in the colors and I'll paint over these lines so that it, you know, eventually when I get done, it doesn't come through, it's gone. Um, drives other artists nuts. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> I scared myself. No, uh, this is funny. Talking about other artists uh, and stuff and not liking what each other does. I mean, I like a lot of art. I like all kinds of art. Um, well, not all art, but most. <laughs> but anyway, what, I have a degree in art education, from University of Miami, love the University of Miami, yay. If there's any canes on here, go canes. Uh, but um, I had to intern, of course, um, in my senior year. And I was lucky enough to be part of a special program. This was in 1971-72. And um, they decided that Florida State, Florida, and University of Miami went in this together, and they worked it out with uh, North Miami Beach Senior High School that we would intern. Now, there was, there was I think, about 15 or 20 of us total. I was the only one that was an artist. But then we were there full time for um, a whole semester, which was great. Usually when you intern, it's only for a couple of weeks. And we got paid, which you don't get paid as interns. We got paid half teachers pay. So that was great. And then instead of having to go to the university for any other classes while we were doing this, the professors from all three colleges would come, one of them would come each week and meet with us for a couple hours right at the uh, North Miami Beach Senior High. Well, anyway, the uh, art teacher that was head of the art department and she she was oh, she was such a hippie. She was neat. She was she was she was great. She was a good artist, very good artist. But uh, she wasn't too fond of my artwork because I of course like cartooning. I love Disney. I don't get right. And we of course had an art club. So I wasn't there a week and we had a meeting of the art club, which I think we had about 30 students in the art club. And uh, she said, let's go around the room and everybody tell you, tell us who influenced you most in your life uh, to be an artist. Well, it's going around the room, people are saying different things, whatever. It gets to me and I said, Walt Disney. And Norman Rockwell, she, it could have, there, were, mm, there were lightning bolts coming out of her eyes looking at me. She did not like me from that point on. She said, how could you say something like that? I went, am I supposed to lie? That's where I, she didn't like it. She was not happy. I'm, I'm lucky that I uh, got through that semester. <laughs> okay. Another story. So anyway, I'll use a pink pearl eraser. And um, when I'm doing these these uh, characters, I like to get the image a little bit tighter. It just makes it easier when I'm um, painting them. Your hair falls falls in closer to her face here, and that way, and 
her oval face. Okay. And let's see. Her eye. So put her eyelid down. Make her a little sexier. Don't. Don't. I know what you're thinking. No, I will not go there. <laughs> I am all for women in the Me Too movement, by the way, just so you know. So, um, all right, yeah, that's that's close enough. Um, then her neck, and it wasn't my idea to put her in this painting, by the way. It's a great character. Um, When our son spent three summers working um, at Disney, Walt Disney World, uh, while he was at Florida State University, he actually started when they first opened the studios and they were doing the backstage tours, which were great when they did them originally. And he did the walkthrough tour and he'd take like a hundred people and go first into where they had the, the submarine. Uh, you, people would go on there and be a, in the TV video as they did it. It was just fun. And they take you into Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and pick a couple of kids out to ride on the, the huge bee. I think it was a hornet. Uh, but anyway, he took them. And they were actually then filming and doing drawings of uh, Disney cartoons at that time at, the, at Disney World, which they aren't doing there anymore. And uh, sadly, they closed the animation studio there. Uh, and uh, so, so he, he loved it. And, but also, though, he didn't get to do it all the time because other times he had to work at Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which he said was miserable because you got to wear tennis shoes, but it was so hot. If you were standing in the sun, your feet started burning. And so they were always trying to find a shady spot to put their feet somehow. <laughs> and then when they'd get a break, they'd run back to the break area, which was behind um, – the uh, New York Street or something. It was it was one of the one behind one of the facades on New York Street, and it was they liked it because it was uh, uh, stones uh, on the ground there, and so they weren't hot and they cool their feet off and then get water to pour on their feet. But another one they did also was uh, the uh, Roger Rabbit area right there too. Anyway. So, shoulder comes up higher. That. And we got that sort of in the right spot. And actually, that's not too far off there. Um, We had a friend in high school, one of our, one of our, I'm not going to say her name. She was actually very, very uh, attractive, but she had the tiniest waist. And I, I didn't do this, but I, I'd look at her waist and I think, my gosh, I could put my hands around her waist and they would, my fingers would touch. Okay. Yeah, this isn't far off from, from what I roughed in before. So this will work when I'm painting it. This arm is a little that way. Oh.
I'm looking at this picture I'm using, I'm going like, she has one black sleeved arm and the other one's white. I didn't, is that right? I didn't know that. Um, any, any, oh, and this comes, this comes away. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing. I, I just come in a little bit heavier on it. Um, make a few corrections after I've uh, roughed that sketch in. Oh, that's not bad. And that comes along with that. But I've got her uh, uh, smiling. She's amused by what's going on with uh, Goofy and Pinocchio uh, trying to get the uh, whacked out crazy Mickey in there. Uh, and I'm going to stop for a minute now and Sarah did you come up with a name for the boat yet? Uh, <laughs> thank you for your service oh thank you um, Tina hi Tina <laughs> I was just talking about you uh, no I uh, in fact just there were some questions about um, when I was actually in because I was over in the Vietnam area, 64th through 66, and a lot of the operation and photographs I were taking were on carriers uh, that missions were being flown off of. So I was taking pictures of that, pilots coming back, and seeing some of them wounded, uh, shot up planes. But then also I was on other ships that actually went into the, um, uh, Tonk, right, we, we were in the Tonkin Gulf a lot, but we went right along the, uh, the, the shoreline of Vietnam. We went, and the last, Day I was in Vietnam, I was in 30 miles south of Saigon on the Saigon River. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing of what happened, but because of that, and me getting on board a swift boat, which is a there was a very fast, uh, powerful boat could do 40 knots, and we went to investigate a village that we had just shelled, and an airstrike had happened, and things went south, and got blown up and I, well anyway, that's enough of that. Yes, I have PTSD and the VA here in Chicago at Heinz is fantastic, taking care of me. But anyway, there was questions about, uh, uh, this is the Vietnam uh, service medal, which of course I have. And then each time you're, um, you are back, you go back in the combat area, you get a bronze, these little tiny bronze stars. They're actually very small, and they go on this ribbon. And I've got one on there, not realizing from when I got this, that actually I was back in there five times for a month, uh, six weeks, uh, different times. And then discovering uh, by my research the specific date, which is highlighted in blue here, um, of when um, I was in the Saigon River and things happened. Well, that was kind of a downer. <laughs> let's, let's go to something uh, more lighthearted. Uh, Tina, I've been reading your book and it's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. It's fantastic. Did you like your swim in the Pirates of the Caribbean? Uh, no. <laughs> Three times I fell in the Pirates of the Caribbean, and it was all caused by Lee, who pulled, pulled a stunt on me all three times and, and caused me to fall in the water. So wonder I didn't kill myself the first time. I, I actually was um, my first morning on the job, one of my first mornings, and uh, we went into the Pirates of the Caribbean through one of the back ways, which is so cool to get to do that the first time. Uh, and we actually came came through this uh, this door, and suddenly we were standing on a big mound of jewels. We were in the very last scene uh, of the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, which has changed now the way they have it, uh, which is cool. I like the way it is now. But anyway, we walked down all these jewels and coins and gold coins and everything, and what. Well, this is really bizarre. And we got down to where the boats were. And at night, um, 
there are so many boats. They don't put all the boats away in the back. There are, there are boats throughout the attraction just sitting there, um, you know, front end to back end, you know, bow to stern. And um, bow to stern, you can tell it's in the Navy. <laughs> Excuse me. And anyway, uh, I said, so what are we doing? And Lisa says, oh, we're going to go over there to the jail scene, which is right across the boats, and check. Um, something that's on the other side of the jail scene. Now, I'm looking at the jail scene. I went, when we get over there, how do we get? There's no way to walk past in front of the jail scene to get to another area. Well, that's what I'm thinking. But in the meantime, he steps across the boat. Now he stepped. I didn't think about this till later. He stepped down into the boat on the on the on the seat, which had non-skid stuff on it. He went across and gets up, and I started to follow me he said just step across the bow it's quicker and without even thinking i stepped on the front of the boat well it's highly polished <laughs> gloss paint and, and my i stepped on it and the shoes i had on were the wrong shoes and i just went feet went out right from under me i i fell down on the bow and then went over the side and in the water Thanks, Lee. He says, yeah, welcome to animation art. <laughs> and then we got up on the other side where where the scene is. And of course, this is what you just read about, is that then I says, now what? And Lee turns sideways uh, um, and goes through the bars. Um, and I went, wait a minute, these guys can get out. And the bars on the cell are separated wide enough so you can see the characters and we walked around turn once we got in we turned to the right went around behind the burning fake burning embers and walked into the next scene around the other side i thought that was really really neat um but no i didn't like being in the water um anyway um <laughs> uh, let's see karina when i draw and especially paint cgi characters on traditional paper or canvas, I find it challenging to you. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm obviously old school. Um, I don't, I just got a new program where I can actually draw on the computer. So I'm having some fun with that now and getting used to that. But, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> coffee. I find that I, um, can actually draw something faster by hand than doing it on a computer. Uh, and uh, well, I just, I'm just used to that. But it is a challenge because you have to deal with an eraser and everything else and changing things just like on here. Um, so kudos to all of you who have grown up with computers and these programs and are doing everything on here now. But what I will say to artists in school is, please, please, please do hand drawing and, and learn to do things the traditional way and learn perspective. That's one of the things I find they do not teach uh, properly in schools. Um, and then you see people doing things on a program and the perspective is all off and it's because they don't know how to do perspective. They don't see it. So. Enough of that. Um, Tina, I highly recommend your books. They are so well written. Well, thank you. And, and I got to tell you, a lot of that's due to Suzanne because she is great. Um, when I when I write my chapters um, and I, I sit down and I actually take a pen and I just start writing. And then we sit down at the computer together and uh, go through the, the what I've written and it doesn't lose my my feel of you know how I've written it or anything, but she makes me look so good. Um, yeah, and and right now if she was if she walks in, she's going to go. Are you still on there? Um, uh, she's not bad. She's just drawn that way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, let me see who else is on here. Boy, everybody said, "Oh wow, this is really." Okay.
Wow, melancholia, tombs, not related to Leota tombs by any chance, are you? Um, okay, I, I think we've got everybody. Uh, we've got, I think I've looked at all the things. Any, any other uh, specific questions uh, I should know about? Um, oh, down here at the bottom. Yeah, okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me check. Uh, will you be signing books at WDW anytime soon? No, I would like to say yes, but uh, that is something we've been trying to work out, um, and hopefully that will happen, or we'll be down there signing books, maybe not on property. I, I don't know. We're working on it. We are, uh, I will tell you this, we are working out the details. Uh, I've mentioned this on, on here. I brought it up. This will be the last thing I'll do, and we'll stop because uh, I'm getting punchy, as if I wasn't when I started. <laughs> and I'm still here. Anyway, is it Friday yet? Um, that uh, we are going to start doing, we we'll still have some book signings. I know the Aurora Public Library wants to have us back because that went so well. And we're trying to set up some more in Chicago, but we're going to start doing in-home presentations and book signings so that uh, uh, say one of you wanted to host one of these, uh, we would have, you would have about up to 20 people, and we've definitely decided it would have to be $20 a person uh, to do this, and we would uh, do a presentation in a much more relaxed, much more intimate situation and setting, um, and uh, the host can provide uh, just hors d'oeuvres or chips or whatever, and soft drinks or whatever you want to do and um, we can have a fun evening of it and we will sign books we will sell books at these too so that's what we're working on and we'll keep you informed and please join me again i promise you next week um, i will be uh, actually painting <laughs> and um uh, Probably I will have some color on this, but I don't think I'll, I'll show it to you, but I, I will I won't be painting I think I'll be painting the Jungle Cruise painting in sepia tones because I'll be finishing it up and uh, Tina Baz UK book signing uh, smiley face. Yes You have to raise money to get us over there because we've been to England four times. We love it last time It was in 2004. We were there for a month um, uh, between Thanksgiving and right up to like two days before Christmas. Fabulous, fabulous. We love England and uh, we, I, we would live there if we could. Of course, our other home is Downton Abbey, but you know, we don't have a chance to get back there all the time to go to our other home. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> uh, thanks, yeah, Larry, thanks RJ, take care. Um, Oh, Karina Ro Ro Rojas, is that how you say? If you're very interested in hosting one, uh, might be more than 20. Oh, goodness. Okay, Karina, uh, we'll uh, message each other and uh, discuss it, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, look forward to it. Bye, everybody. See you next week. I'm going to take another sip of my now cold coffee. Still good. Have a magical weekend, everybody. See you next